during the pre-production uh, of the album, we were lucky enough to have a studio in Aussie Park here in Perth 24-7, so we'd all just go in whenever we had time and work on stuff. And there was just a run of a few nights where I got working on what would ultimately be for the common stock. Uh, the guitar chords had this nice country tinge to them. The vocals started coming pretty quickly uh, and I just kind of kept on with it. Then the boys came in and we tore it all apart and uh, we ended up putting most of it back in because it just kind of had a really nice balance to it. I think in the end we ended up coming back to a lot of the original ideas um, of just keeping it simple and really focusing on getting the lyrics across. Uh, in terms of some of the parts, uh, it was pretty open-ended as to where this song could go. For the Common Stop is uh, the, probably the big grand song on the record, not in terms of, of its number of instruments or its you know, volume or whatever. It was, it was just a slow-paced song with really strong lyrics. And one of the, the elements that makes it so big and haunting, I guess, for, for me was the Evo guitars and the big wailing vocal that Grant, Grant's used at the end of the song. We definitely wanted to keep the, the vibe of For the Common Stock quite ambient and, and quite underspoken. You know, we never wanted it to become like a big, full arrangement. Um, in saying that though, I think the bridge is definitely one of the darkest, most powerful moments on the record for me. Um, everything from the lap steel parts to, you know, those massive high vocals in the background give it a really dark, sinister sort of a feel. The percussion we've actually got on this tune, um, we laid down uh, a big, a big ass bass drum. Uh, I was hitting it, I think, with a, a drumstick that had a kitchen sponge uh, elastic banded to the end of it and also uh, a snare drum hitting it with the same thing. We also layered up a whole bunch of different percussion, um, people strumming snare wise on snare drums and I think we were shaking a few things and we were, we were banging a couple of things on the ground also and uh, we had four or five people in the room at once doing it and it, it came out really, really nice. The beauty about recording these days is that a lot of the elements that are recorded in the demos can actually be kept in, and carried through and used on the, on the real recordings. And in this instance, for the common stock, the demos had a beautiful haunting vibe with the use of Evo guitars and some big epic vocals that were sung at the end of the song, which ended up staying. We, 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 they were perfect, we captured the vibe and we ended up using them on the, on the final recording. That's how we do it. 962 takes. Lock it in, Eddie. Or gold. Some just shinier than others. That's right. This is nine carat. This is nine carat. Yeah. Eight carat. Yeah. That particular piece was nine carat. Lyrically, the inspiration behind for the common stock comes from uh, a roof, probably an unexpected place. That being Ricky Gervais in the office. Um, he's discussing. Uh, an idea which is basically saying if everybody was to come to the table with their own woes and troubles they'd probably rather take their own bag home with them as opposed to taking a share of the common stock uh, and obviously he went on to butcher the sentiment in hilarious fashion as he does but the idea I thought was quite noble and quite strong. We're a little bit obsessed with that show it's certainly I think the greatest TV show ever made Ricky Gervais is probably my favourite comedic hero. Um, being that he can influence, influence us to, uh, to write songs based around concepts from his comedy series, uh, I think he's doing a pretty good job. Oh,